Okay. Um, so today I'm going to uh, be talking a little bit about um, AWS S3 buckets. And, and uh, but before I dive in uh, into talking about S3 buckets, um, I do want to mention that um, that while we're talking about uh, cloud services in general um, over the next couple of days, uh, we're we're mainly going to be referring to um, to AWS, uh, and that's because um, AWS is where uh, where NASA NASA data is is hosted, um, and so uh, there that that creates a pretty good reason to um, to 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 uh, set up your services in, in AWS if you're working with those data, um, and you and you need to uh, to migrate large quantities of it. Um, but uh, pretty much everything that we're discussing here. Um, has uh, you know have analogs in other cloud service platforms. So um, just because we're talking about AWS doesn't mean that you can't do all of these same things in Google Cloud or um, Azure or any of the other uh, uh, cloud service platforms available. So um, AWS S3 buckets are um, are, are AWS's uh, solution for um, object storage in the cloud, and so. Um, an important distinction to make here is that uh, S3 buckets, S3 is not a, a file system. So um, it doesn't have a hierarchical, hierarchical um, structure of organizing your um, all of your, your files into directories and subdirectories. Um, everything is stored um, in, a, in, a, in a flat structure um, side by side. And so each, each of the objects in a S3 bucket um, Contains uh, a key, which is its its file path, um, the the data itself, so the, the file, and then some metadata around um, the the type of file it is, when it was saved, when it was last modified, that that type of information. And so you can see here um, at the bottom there are a couple example paths to some uh, to some data in an S3 bucket, and so we can see that there is this um, the, the name of the bucket, my bucket. Uh, and, and then what appears to be um, a, a directory called data dir um, and containing two files. Data dir looks like it contains data data one dot h five and data two dot h five. However, um, that is that is uh, that that is deceptive, slightly deceptive, because these are not actual folders. Again, there is no um, there is no uh, file file system structure in place. So um, the keys to these specific files contain, um, they both contain uh, the same prefix, but um, but but there is no actual directory or folder called data dir. They just um, share the first part of their file names of their keys, basically. And so um, if you're working in the AWS console, um, you, you can be easily fooled um, because uh, there are references to folders. You know, you can create folders, and you can um, upload um, upload files and deposit them in those folders, or at least it appears that way. But this is really just about convenience. Uh, people are used to working with file systems and used to organizing their files this way. So, um, so AWS has provided this um, this convenient way for interacting with your data that's stored in an S3 bucket. But um, but these are not re real folders. Each of these um, each of these these uh, the files in this in this bucket contain um, the the shared in this particular directory. They all contain the um, the prefix fear hydrosar training as part of their key, um, but that is not a separate directory. Uh, and so, like I mentioned, we're talking about AWS here, um, and so the reason that we that we're using AWS is because NASA data are hosted in in um, in AWS specifically in the US West 2 region and um in in transferring data inside of a, a single um region is um is just about free so uh so if you can set up your services that are going to be using your data in the same region as the data are then you're going to um to be able to to interact with that data um more more cost effectively um than if you were uh if you were setting up your service in some other region or with some other uh, cloud provider. Um, all right, and then just to um, to reiterate that that you know there are other cloud providers out there that have similar solutions 
Uh, so there is object storage in um, in all of these, uh, you know, provided by all of these other cloud providers. Um, and I'm not going to dive in, into those, but I just wanted to point out that these these are things that exist. Um, all right, and so now I'm going to move to uh, to a demo, and so we're going to look at how to um, how to work with and interact with uh, data in S3 buckets. So there are a few different types of bucket configurations. You can configure your bucket to be public and available to anybody. It can be private, um, only available to the users who you allow. Um, and then there's also um, the way that uh, that that the costs are handled for transferring data. So um, it can be set up so that the owner of the bucket pays for any, any data that's moved um, in or out of that bucket, or um, it can be set up so that the person who's requesting the data, who's who's accessing the data in the bucket, that their AWS account is charged for um, for any any networking fees that are incurred. Um, we'll also look at how to how to set up access. So, if you are not using a, a public bucket um, and you need to configure your your credentials, you can you can configure your um, your AWS access key in the terminal. We'll go over that. Um, if if the public if the bucket is public, you can access the data um, anonymously. So we'll show you how to do that. And um, and then uh, for um, you know not all NASA data sets are are streamable, but some um, some data sets more and more are being stored in S3. Um, and and there is the option to access those data directly without downloading a copy of it, but instead just streaming the the data right to um, right to Right to memory to your RAM, and so um, the way to to do that you, that requires access with a an Earth Data Bearer token. So um, I'll I'll demonstrate that and show you how to how to set up an Earth Data Bearer token. Um, and then finally, we'll just take a look at some basic bucket operations, including listing the bucket to see what its contents are, searching for a particular file in the bucket, uh, uploading, downloading, and then um, streaming streaming data directly to memory. So now I'm going to hop over into Open Star Lab here, and um, maybe I'll give just uh, a, a quick review in case anybody um, missed it in the, the last time um, in the last presentation. Uh, if you haven't cloned in the um, the Jupiter book yet for the for the workshop, you can head over um, to the uh, to the repository. the uh, The link to this is in chat, and just click the code button here. Unless you have your SSH keys set up, click over on the H HTTPS uh, tab here and then copy that. And then go back into Open SAR Lab. Um, most likely you'll want to do this from the, the home directory. You can get to the home directory by, so this is the file browser and you can, and you can jump around inside of different directories here. But if you want to get back to home, you just click on the little, the little folder in the upper left here and that will take you back to your home directory. And so then once you're in your home directory, you can open a terminal and just type git clone and then paste in the HTTPS path to the repo and hit enter and it will clone that repo. I'm not going to actually do it because I already have it cloned right here, but just to show you how, how you would do that. Um, and then once once this is cloned to your um, to your your volume and you can see the NYSAR Early Adopters Workshop, October 2024 uh, folder, just open that up and then you'll see all of the files. And now to um, to, to access the, um, the table of contents for this Jupyter book, you can just click the JD button on the left-hand tab here, and then you'll get the, uh, the table of contents, which um, includes links to all of the slides. Um, there's a, a Start Here document that explains how to navigate this book also contains links to the slides and um, and then all of the, uh, the the notebooks are linked here as well. Of course you can also just access these things directly from the file browser um, but the the table of contents will also provide some additional um, links to those slides and um, into some additional resources at the bottom here. Okay so once you um, once you've you've cloned this in this uh, this re repository, um, you can, uh, I guess, another reminder to to set up the software environment needed to run the additional notebooks. You can just click on the um, the notebook install required software with Conda, 
section here and then just run through this notebook to create the um, the, the NICER Early Adopters Workshop uh, content environment. All right, so um, now onto, onto the S3 demos. So uh, I've got two, two notebooks to present here. Um, so the first one covers listing, searching, uploading, and downloading. Um, and so there are a couple of ways that um, that you can interact with programmatically interact with uh, with data stored in a in an S3 bucket. Um, you can use the the AWS uh, command line interface uh, tool, um, or you can you can work in Python with the Boto three uh, Python package. Now, one thing um, to note about Jupyter notebooks is that um, you can run command line. Uh, commands from a code cell in a Jupyter notebook. Uh, you just um, you just enter your command in and you prepend it with an exclamation point. So anywhere in a in a notebook where you see um, an exclamation point starting off uh, a line, that is um, effectively just running it in in a shell. Um, it's it's like pulling up a terminal and running that command in a terminal. Um, it just allows you to to add it to a notebook for uh, you know, to, to save it and, and document it. Um, okay, so, so first we'll look at listing and searching a public S3 bucket. So while a bucket is public, um, it does re require, if, if you're going to access it anonymously, a, a public bucket anon anonymously, you do have to declare that you are accessing that bucket anonymously. And so you can see here that um, after I ran this, this first code cell here, which runs the AWS S3 LS, so this is the list command, um, on, on this bucket location um, with the recursive flag to, to show um, to, so that it will it can uh, it can list the contents of a directory. Um, but you'll see that it didn't it didn't actually do that. It it said unable to locate credentials. Um, and so without credentials, you oh, you know what I think I'm just gonna make this a little bit larger because it's probably pretty small. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so so here you can see that this um, this was unable to to locate my credentials because I didn't um, I didn't declare no sign request, and so this is how you declare yourself as anonymous when you're you're trying to to access a public bucket. So with the no sign request. Um, argument here, we should actually get some results. And so here it is listing the contents of um, not the entire bucket, but the uh, but but the the key all keys that start with the S3 example. So in a way, this is both um, a, a command that allows you to um, to list as well as search. Um, all right. And so, then in the um, in the Boto three um, example here, we're going to do the basically the same thing, um, just using Python code instead of a um, instead of a command line command line option. And so here we create um, an S three resource. We define the bucket name, and Um, and then we iterate through all of the objects that it finds and list them. However, once again, um, we have an, an issue because there are no credentials found because we didn't um, we didn't declare ourselves anonymous. And so you do this a slightly different way when using Bodo. Um, you have to set up a uh, a config with an unsigned uh, signature, and so um, that requires importing these these couple of additional packages here. And um, and then including this this config. So now when we run this, we should get the results. Yes. So now we can see that it's showing us all of the objects. However, um, unlike the the command line option where I was able to include um, part of the the prefix here, um, where was that right here? Where I included the S three example portion of the key. Um, so it showed me, you know what seems like the contents of a folder, even though once again, these are not folders. 
Um, I was not able to do that with the the Bodo call. Um, if I want to, if I want to look at a specific, um, you know, a specific prefix and and effectively dive into you know seem what's seemingly a, a folder in S three, um, then I can use the the instead of um, instead of iterating through all of the the objects in the bucket here, I can use the object filter and add in a prefix. And so here I'm going to use that S3 example prefix. And so now, now I can actually search um, for uh, you know, more specific files and not just list out the entire contents of the bucket. Okay, and so now we can move on to, to downloading. Um, so this is very, uh, very similar to a typical Linux uh, copy command. You're just basically appending AWS S3 um, and so you're uh, you you can copy from um, so this is always the uh, the source followed by the destination and so um, that can you can move files from an S3 bucket uh, to your local environment um, and then uh, an uploading is is simply the the reverse um, and so once again I will try to um, to in this case copy some data. Um, but I'm not using my no sign request argument, so uh, it should error out on me here. Okay, yeah, fatal error, unable to locate credentials. And so now with the no sign request in place, it should actually download that file. All right, and so now you can see um, that this file has been downloaded. This example, uh, example.txt. <clears throat> All right, and now I'm going to delete that file. Um, Okay, and so uh, so now I'm going to instead of um, instead of trying to download the uh, the file using um, you know as an anonymous user using no send request, um, I'm going to uh, or no sorry uh, yeah so I'm going to attempt to download it with Boto three now, um, but unsigned. So once again I'll get the no no credentials error, and now um, having to find a an unsigned signature in my config. Um, then it should let, allow me to download that data. And I refresh this. Yes, it just downloaded a fresh copy of example.txt. <clears throat> okay. Um, and so if you do have access to a, a bucket, um, you know, public or, or private, um, you can configure your, your AWS credentials to access it without having to supply the no sign. Uh, request in the case of a public bucket, or if you're if it's a private bucket, of course that's that's the only way that you can um, can can access it is to to uh, provide your credentials. Um, and so here are some instructions on how to to go ahead and, and set up those credentials. Um, I'm not actually going to uh, to do this live because it would involve copying my private keys for for all the seats. So um, instead, I'm I've just uh, created a couple of um, animations here that walk through the process. So you'll need to open up a terminal in order to do this. And so this just demonstrates that you can, um, you know, use the Jupyter Lab uh, interface um, to to open up multiple tabs like this. And you can click the plus button here and then open up a terminal. And so this is where you would, um, you know, you would enter the uh, the following commands. Which I'm just going to pull this back so we have one big screen again. Um, so once you have your terminal open, then you can just type AWS configure. And if you have, um, if you already have, if you have an AWS account with um, access keys and a secret access key, then you can enter that information here. Uh, you want to put in the, the region. So assuming that you're, you're working with NASA data, that's probably going to be US to S2. And then um, you can, you can request output in different formats. Uh, uh, it's pretty common to use, to use JSON there. Um, so once again, I'm not going to set my credentials up, but I, I do already have 
um, some credentials here. Um, and open oh, the wrong directory. Okay, so, uh, all right, so you'll see that I have um, a .aws temp file. So the so .aws is is the directory which holds the config and the credential files. When when you run configure, this um, this this hidden .aws file is created. Um, in this case, I wanted to show what it was like when I didn't have my credentials, so I I just renamed that file. But now I'm going to um, to move it back, and I'm just going to rename it uh, .aws again. So now we can see that I have a dot. AWS directory, which contains my credentials. So if I come back to this um, to this notebook here, I'm just going to clear the output and restart the kernel. Okay. And so you'll recall that previously, um, when I did not have any credentials set up and I tried to run this command without the no sign request, it failed. However, now with credentials, it will list the contents. And the same is true for all of these other commands. So um, I can now uh, list the um, list the bucket with Boto three without providing um, an unsigned signature, and I can download data without providing um, without declaring myself as anonymous. And I can also upload to the bucket. Um, so. Uh, in general, most public buckets don't allow you to, to upload um, because that could be fairly dangerous. It, anybody could upload anything and and, um, and and spend a lot of money. Um, so typically only download access is provided um, in, a, in a public bucket. But if you do have access to the bucket, then, um, then and, and you've set up your credentials, then you can upload to it. So in this case, I've just swapped around um, the order of the the source and destinations on my on my copy command here. So I'm going to be copying the example text that's here in my in my Jupyter Hub server to the bucket, and you can see that that successfully uploaded. Um, something else that you can do is uh, is to set up multiple profiles when you configure your credentials. So. If you just run AWS configure, you're going to configure your default credentials. However, if you run um, AWS configure with the profile argument and then define a profile name, it will create a, a second profile. And so this can be handy if you're if you're accessing uh, buckets in different locations and you have different um, you know different keys to access different buckets. Then you can set up these different profiles so that you don't have to constantly overwrite your credentials um, to access a different bucket. And so in, in my case, I have set up a profile called OSL. And so here with the profile argument, um, you can see that, um, that that worked as well because I have that, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that OSL profile set up in my, in my uh, credentials. All right, and then the, the same is, um, you know, the, the same holds true for the Bodo package as well. Um, oh. Sample path is not defined. Let's see. Okay, well, apparently I didn't I didn't uh, update these last couple of code cells, um, and I'm just not including the right path. But um, but the point is, you can um, you can access you know, different buckets with different profiles. You can access public buckets anonymously. Um, you can access public buckets with your credentials. And of course, you can access a private bucket with your with your credentials. <clears throat> so there's one other um, one other way to access data in in S3 that um, that I'd like to cover, which is uh, streaming data directly. And so um, there's an example here that uses some Opera data. We don't have um, nicer nicer data, uh, of course, yet. Nicer hasn't launched. We don't have any any sample data um, available to the to the public to access in this way either. So um, so I'm providing this example with Opera data, but um, but the uh, but accessing accessing NiceR data directly from S3 will um, uh, will be possible in a very similar way uh, eventually. So 
Um, in order to to do this, you 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 need some um, or you need a uh, um, you need a uh, an, an Earth Data login bear token, and so uh, we'll get to that point in just a second. But initially, here I'm just going to import some required uh, software packages, and then um, this defines the uh, the the Opera products that I would like to look at. Um, you'll see that there are some uh, code cells commented out that allow you to look at different types of Opera data. In this case, I'm looking at a few RTCs. And now we get down here to this section where it wants my uh, bearer token. And so um, if you have an Earth Data Login account, you can create a bearer token. Uh, there's a link here to the documentation that explains how to do that. Um, once again, I'm not going to actually go and create a bearer token because um, I, well, I already have one, but um, but that that is something that you shouldn't share with everybody. So, uh, but there are these great instructions um, that that direct you uh, to sign into your own account and walk you through um, generating a token. It's pretty straightforward. You just click on the generate token tab there and the generate token button, and then you can. Um, uh, once it's been created, you can copy that token. And so, um, so I have a token similar to this created for myself. So back here um, in the notebook, I'll run this code cell and you'll see it says enter your, your bearer token. So I'm just going to go and copy that from where I have it stored. Now I can paste this in here. <clears throat> okay, and you'll see that this is uh, is pointed to um, an uh, uh, an S three credentials endpoint, and I'm passing in the bearer token. Um, this defines the bucket where the data is stored, um, and. Uh, and the prefix is um, in references the the type of data. So in this case, it's going to be um, Opera L two RTC S one. <clears throat> okay, and so now I have um, I have loaded in in that uh, in that data. And so now I can select a particular layer. So in the case of RTCs, um, you know I can look at the the VH uh, or the VV polarizations um, of the RTC or I can look at the layer layover shadow mask. Um, this is really just showing you that, um, that without downloading any data into my, you know, nothing, no files were saved here in my file system. Um, yeah, I have loaded this data into memory, and and I can look at it in, um, as an uh, as an X-ray um, data array. And then there are some um, there's some additional code here that just shows you how to how to uh, stack up a bunch of those RTCs into a time series. But but the main point of the of of showing this notebook was really just to show um, that you you can access data directly with an Earth Data uh, an Earth Data login bearer token and how to set up that that bearer token. 